This is a show where we discuss the week in Humboldt, the local issues and the local personalities with the local personalities. I'm Talvi Freed, your local host for the next hour. The North Coast Stand Down is an annual event the first weekend every October, providing services to North Coast veterans. What happens at the Stand Down event? What are some of the major issues facing our veterans? And what types of services are available here in Humboldt County for those who service our country, not just at the Stand Down, but throughout the year? Joining us tonight, to discuss these topics, we have Renee Mavdi, County Veteran Service Officer for the County of Humboldt, Matthew Gilliland, Veterans Program Coordinator for College of the Redwoods, and Daniel Jacobs, I believe Arcata Veterans Hall Manager, uh, also American Legion member and a representative from North Coast Stand Down. Welcome everyone. I want to first go into um, a little bit of a, a qualifier uh, session, which it, which is uh, gives you an opportunity to kind of talk about what what you do. Let's let's start with Matthew. Um, what what does the CR what, what service veteran services office provide? Okay, um, thank you for having me on. By the way. Nope, I guess everybody's having freezies. All right, Matthew, you're- uh... um, So our, the vet service officer- uh, the... uh, You, you, you froze hope. a little bit there. Okay, I am getting the unstable connection. So I apologize if I do freeze. Um, you know, our, our kind of base function is to uh, ensure the administration of VA education benefits to students. Uh, student beneficiaries. Um, in addition to that, we we do have a resource center, um, and the goal for the resource center is to basically be a one stop shop for students to come in and and get help navigating all of the ups and downs and ins and outs of getting into school, as well as getting connected with you know community service that are for military affiliated folks. Um, you know, if, if we don't know, we know who knows and, and that's, that's kind of what we do. Awesome. Uh, Renee, what is the veteran service office? Well, our program is Humboldt County, uh, office under the department of health and human services, veteran service office. And our office is kind of the referral source for everybody to try to navigate the VA system. We help them connect with their benefits and the word benefits is so vast. We have to help them with either is education, um, healthcare, accessing, you know, all the different levels of benefits. So we're, we're um, help them file all their claims for disabilities and help them with all the monetary benefits. So we're mostly a referral and, and direct source, but we help them with their benefits. Daniel, you're, you're part of a few things here. Um, so let let everybody listening or watching know what a. So uh, so I just wanted to give credit. Kevin Buchanan is the hall manager. He does a really great job. Um, I'm the judge advocate for American Legion Post Two Seven Four at the Arcade of Vets Hall. Um, we're really just a, a it's a community center that uh, it's centered around veterans and their and their families. But we're really looking to expand, and uh, we've got you know we've got a lot of projects we're working on now in regard to uh, you know different things that we could probably talk about later. But um, one of those things that we're doing is trying to rebuild the relationship we have with the stand down. I was one of the original coordinators when the stand down first started. I was the volunteer coordinator and the site coordinator, and I was really heavily involved. I don't do as much of the coordination now, but I've been coordinating and bringing in volunteers and, um, you know, coordinating a bunch of different things just uh, when I do have time to do them. Um, uh, so, 
Before I even go, well, I guess let's start with what is the North Coast stand down and why is it necessary to have? Because it seems like there's so many services year round. Why is this an important uh, event to have? Um, I can answer some of that. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure Renee and Matt can answer a lot too. Um, you know, the, the stand down started back. I the first one was I believe in 2010. Is is that correct, Renee? I think it was 2005. Oh wow! So I thought okay, so um, that's earlier than I thought it was. I thought it was 2010, but uh, I mean, um, when did when did we uh, with Kim start doing it? 2005. Oh. Um, okay. Well, you know, we originally it was, uh, you know, it's, it's grants that are paid for through the VA and they put them out there for veteran service organizations to do a one time, uh, a year, one stop shop for, for three days where veterans could come in. Um, they could be housed there for the weekend. They could get, uh, clothing, food. Uh, it really, it was just a place to get all the services together in one, uh, and and do it in a way that was you know it, accessible for anybody, and then make sure that anybody could get there to access the services. Standouts happen all over the country. Um, they they've they they all kind of work their own different way. The North Coast stand down. Um, it had, I've been to a lot of different stand downs, uh, and the North Coast stand down has a really uh, more of just a friendly vibe. Uh, we do things that are much different than most other stand downs do them. We've had pet services, Native American services, um, uh, that we've had live music and barbecues and things like that since the beginning. Um, and it's it's always been a little more, uh, you know, attuned to the population here in Humboldt County. The, to, the reason that, um, you know, the, the reason that we do a stand down is because sometimes people might not feel comfortable um, going to different programs. They might not have access to the VA in different ways. Some people aren't really looking to stop being homeless, right? And it's a, it's a, and that's okay. That's that's totally fine. But they need resources too. We need to make sure that we're getting them healthcare. Make sure that we're getting them, uh, you know, access to shelter and food and things like that in the community, so that they, you know, at least have what it takes to be safe in the community when they're they're, you know, living outside as our outdoor neighbors. Anybody else want to comment on on why why is the stand down so important? Why one day a year? Because that's. Hey. I, so I think, um, as Daniel touched on, having all of the services in one place, you know, for a limited amount of time, but all in one place, uh, oftentimes it just as as a as somebody who did transition out of the military into civilian lives, um, you don't know what's available. You don't know all of the things are that are available, and and. Um, if you can, events like this provide an opportunity to see what is available, and then you can you pick and choose what what fits your needs um, the best, and and they can they can you know approach them and get contact information, and and hopefully have the capacity to follow up and and get what they need. Another way to look at it too, and I agree with everybody saying is is when you're homeless, it's really hard to pack up your life and go from office to office to learn what's available. So having everything in one place where they can feel that soft, gentle handoff to the next person that knows how their what their needs are, maybe before they do, helping them learn about their benefits, you know, get enrolled in school, get, you know, get the funding to survive, get the health care, having everything in one place with the dental, the dog services, and making it feel like a community, which we are, in one place for once a year, for many years now, has been a very gratifying situation to help so many people at their different points in their needs. Because the needs they may have had today might not be the same they were pre-COVID. So having the population have this resource available to them, and it truly feels like a fair where they can learn all about all their resources in one place is an outstanding opportunity. So, I mean, there's there's a query. There's a 
of amongst the houseless population, there's a very high percentage who happen to be veterans. And I'm curious why you think that could be. How how come people leave the military and suddenly become not suddenly, but they become houseless or or seem to not be able to to cope with with day to day life what, what other people would think is normal. It's a that's a it's a complicated topic, right? And it's one that's actually changed over time, even even since the the beginning of the stand down. So if you if you look back to you know the 1960s and 70s when uh, when folks were getting drafted in Vietnam, um, it was about 10 percent of the population was serving in the military at the time. Uh, it, during the 90s, when uh, during uh, you know the Clinton the Clinton presidency, but it, it had been something that had been brewing for a while. They talked about the peace dividend, um, where they wanted to reduce the size and the impact on taxpayer, the size of the military, the impact on taxpayers. Um, so you know the presidents were campaigning, and and it was a bipartisan um, you know topic that was you know being talked about for a number of different presidential elections. And, uh, you know, during the 90s was when they actually were downsizing the military down to, uh, you know, my, my, I, I think I'm, I'm doing this all off of memory right now, but it's, I'm pretty sure it's about 1% of the, the population now. So, um, you know, when, when we first started the stand down, um, there was, there was still a number of Vietnam veterans on the streets that I mean it was a large number of population so you're talking about people who were conscripted uh, people who were heavily traumatized um, they were under trained they went through extremely traumatizing events uh, overseas and then they came back um, and they they struggled with adjusting back to society um, you know we have we, we would have the GI bill and things like that to help people transition. But when you're talking about, you know, such a sizable portion of the population, um, you know, going through something so traumatic, it's gonna have a tremendous effect afterwards. And I, I mean, even when I started working in the field, of, uh, I'm, a, I'm a clinical social worker, but when I started working in the field back, um, you know, it, around 2008 and, and during the time period that, you know, I was getting involved with the stand down, I was shocked how many Vietnam veterans uh, that I was the first person they'd ever talked to. Um, they were I, they had come in from the streets. Um, you know, they 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 didn't they'd never been housed since the 70s um, or the 60s, even since they came back. And I was the first person that they talked to and I was helping them get into transitional housing or whatever program it was that that they were working on. And and now things have changed, you know, so we're talking about, uh, um, you know, the last you know 20 years of the global war on terror. It's more than 20 years now. Um, it's it's a much smaller military. It's a volunteer force that's had a lot of opportunities, but also we're talking about folks that you know they chose the military for a reason, and they, you know they it's it's people who you know they were looking for opportunities, and then you know they were exposed to a lot of risk, and you know came back and may not have had enough support. So I, you know there's a lot of studies out there. To show that you know veterans can be very successful and and they can they can do things. You're talking about like the you know very very hardworking, intelligent people that have and and you know physically fit and healthy too. But then if they've incurred any sort of you know hardships or or you know traumatic brain injuries or PTSD or anything like that, I try not to lump everybody in with like an illness or anything like that because it doesn't define anybody. But these are these are very real uh, concerns that we have, and those things can lead to you know complications like substance abuse and um, you know lack of family resources, lack of supports in the community, and we need to be we need to be uh, you know working for those people. They gave so much for this country, and you know I, I think the minimum we can do is just make sure that there's equity and provide services that can help them get to the point where they're, you know, having the same access as everybody should in those kinds. So it's, it's, it's changed, but it's, uh, and it's complicated, but, you know, we're, we're doing our best. Matthew, did you want to comment on that? No. 
So I'm I'm not a social scientist. Uh, I did appreciate everything Daniel touched on, and something something he mentioned in the stand down um, when we were talking about the stand down itself is uh, there. I think there are some veterans that are not necessarily looking to be housed. Um, they don't. They would they would prefer to not conform to society, and um, the reasons for that I. They're vast and complicated, and um, I, I don't have much uh, to say on this subject other than it is complicated um, for fear of just uh, lumping folks into inappropriate categories and, and generally misspeaking. But it is, it's a, it, yeah, I, there are many reasons. Thank you. Renee. I have to agree with Daniel. It's a very vast subject. Um, and each person's experience is different. You know, we can't really lump them into one group standing. Um, you know, the stats are there that shows a lot of people are coming out with traumas, mental health issues, but a lot of people are also coming out of the service outstanding, maybe no traumas at all, no issues, no injuries. But, um, it's hard to say you can't put it on one reason they're homeless, but people definitely in the military had a sense of community. They had a sense of team. They had a sense of who they were, their identity. And when they're out of the service, that's lost. So, you know, one of the definite things the stand down tries to do is, is connect everybody. So they might not need all the services. And, but if they can, if they can connect to something bigger than themselves, something that is being, you know, put on by basically hundreds of people trying to help make a difference. I think there's not one answer, but if we can change one person's life, then what a what an accomplishment. That's that's another question I have. It seems like the stand down is really focused on houseless individuals, and I I wonder are there benefits for those who are not, uh, say, say somebody who came out of the military pretty healthy and, and kind of knows where the services are, is there a reason for them to go to the stand down? 100%. Um, a lot of the funding might come from, from specific sources, but it's an all hands event. So it's open for all veterans. It's open for active duty members. Um, but it's a good way to learn what's out there. Somebody might be in the, in the military and they get transition assistance. So they get prepped to help know how to get out, but that's PowerPoints, that's not people. So this is a way for them to actually learn how do we connect somebody with maybe animal services or healthcare, or they just simply think I'm not eligible. I didn't get hurt. I have all my limbs. I'm not those guys. Well, it's helping them to learn everybody may have some type of benefit coming to them and helping them to connect with it. If it's to their GI Bill and going to school and you know getting a fresh start, this isn't just homeless. This is resources for everybody. Um, and, it, and it's open to everyone. I think it's about a good point where we can take our first break. Uh, we will be right back. You're listening to Thursday Night Talk. Thursday Night Talk. I'm Talby Freed, your local host who's going to be hosting Thursday Night Talk. Matthew Gilliland, College of the Redwoods Veteran Program Coordinator, Renee Malachy, County of Humboldt Veteran Service Officer, as well as Daniel Jacob, Advocate for American Legion 274, representing the North Coast Stand Down, which is what we are discussing. And before this, we just feel like we, we kind of went into a, a little bit of why it's important to go to the stand down, though not necessarily specifically what the stand down 
is. I mean, it, it seems like, okay, so there's services there. There's a barbecue. Uh, can, uh, I know there was a little bit of the history in the beginning. And I, I also wonder, like, what happens if somebody, say, in March is like, I need all these services right now. Um, it, it, can they get the same services as the stand down offers? Um, so a few, a few questions there that I just asked. Um, I don't know if anybody would like to answer that. Well, like the, the history is definitely uh, taken out of the Vietnam War, where you take the people from the battlefield and help them rest, get their health care taken care of, and maybe get some entertainment. So, you know, that take them off the battlefield and help them hands on. So it's the same philosophy nonstop for all the years for uh, stand downs, and it's open to everybody. And everybody's needs may change each year. So they might need healthcare last year and now they're enrolled. And now they need to understand how to get enrolled in the college or help with getting a claim for ringing in their ears or something to that effect filed. It's all in one place so that they can try to move from one table to the next. And if nothing else, they gather up the point of context. They put a name to those faces, um, but everybody's needs could change. That's why it's such a big event with so many resources available. Did that help answer that question? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I uh, I kind of wanted to touch on the the part of the question where you you kind of posed, you know, what if a uh, what if a veteran decides in March they need to seek out services. Um, I do think that the veteran service community is pretty well networked and we um, have a, a pretty in. You froze, Matt. In depth knowledge of what each. All right, am I. You're, you're freezing a little bit here and there. How am I back now? You're back now. Okay. Sorry about that. I turned my VPN off. Hopefully that will solve our problem. Um, I, I, I don't know where I froze at, but I do, I think the veteran service community is pretty well networked. And I would like to think that if in that instance, a veteran decided they needed to seek services, no matter what office, or when it, what entity they contacted, um, they would have a good chance of getting connected to the, to the rest of us as well. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I just wanted to point out the reason we do it in October, the first weekend in October every year is because it's the beginning of the fall. Um, you know, things are getting cooler out. It's a time of transitions. Um, it was a very busy past couple of weeks for me um, yeah, in, at, at my job. Um, this time of year is just, it, it can be really rough for people. It's the beginning of the rains. People are starting to think about going indoors for the summer. Um, and we just want to be there right when they, you know, they start thinking about those things so they're not too vulnerable. Um, and it doesn't stop at the stand down. You know, it keeps going from there. It, it's kind of just like a really good time of the year to, focus on these things and talk about it as a community and then, you know, support people, but the help is there year round. Um, and, you know, that it, we're going to be doing things, uh, at least here at the Legion, we're going to be, you know, doing things to help people throughout the winter. Um, Cause we've had, you know, there's a lack of emergency weather resources in the community um, and things like that. So we want to be, we want to be there and, and support people as they, they go into the, the most vulnerable time. It seems like we have a, a panel here who obviously cares very deeply about veteran services and veterans themselves. So do you think that this is a common train of thought for the average individual? Uh, do you think that like the county here in Humboldt is actually giving enough, giving enough attention or care to those who are veterans and actually stepping up to, to fulfill the needs? I would have to say yes. I think because we are a, a solid community, we have VA healthcare in town. We have the Veterans um, Vet Center who does the counseling. We have uh, Nation's Finest for the homeless veterans. 
we have college representatives at both of the universities, or, or, or the university and, and College of the Redwoods. We have active legions and active posts. We have a community that stands behind the veterans. Um, I think there's, everybody can always want more, but I think this, there's a solid foundation in place to help everybody as much as possible. Okay. Do you think that? Yeah, I, I think it just in. I think you froze, Tali. So is that? Oh, no, I, I was letting Daniel talk. Oh, sorry. I, I, I believe just in general. I mean, I am biased because I, I, you know, I do a lot of work in the system and in, you know, in volunteer and professionally, and I have for a long time. But I have access to data that shows that this county does, um, you know, we we support people here, um, and part of it is due to lack of support from outside. Uh, you know, since we're so rural that we've had to. But even compared to other rural counties in California and other states. Humboldt County is way ahead of the curve. I mean, I hear a lot of complaints about how hard it is up here, but in reality, there's a, there's way more work going into supporting our neediest mm -hmm. folks here than um, than other than most other communities. And the, the data supports it. It's just that we all, you know, we live in a rural community with some very unique, um, you, know, you know, issues that we really need to put a lot of work in, and we need help. Um, but we are trying harder than basically anywhere else that I know of. I, uh, I guess I'll approach my answer from the perspective of a, of a veteran. Um, I, you know, I've gone through some rough patches where things were not going according to plan. Um, and I, have nothing but good experiences seeking out um, resources and support in this area. Um, and and now I, I work at an institution that is is very supportive of, of the veteran program specifically. Um, and I've never been um, I, I, either of like needing help or being in a position like I am now to be able to provide it. Um, there's always support. There's been support when I needed help and there continues to be support when I need help giving help. Um, and it's, yeah, I think, I think humble as a, as a, as a, <laughs> is doing a good job. Uh, what what makes Humboldt unique? Because I keep hearing the phrase, like, it's different than elsewhere. Uh, are there, I mean, I assume there's going to be different struggles out here in Humboldt County than elsewhere. So what, what makes it so special, an environment? Well, please keep in mind that not every community, not every county has the same resources. So not every county has a VA health system in place, or the vet center, or even the colleges available. So every county in California has a county veteran service office, but that doesn't mean they're going to that that same person um, in another county is going to have the same resources, or they're going to have to travel hours to go get counseling or see somebody or get their medical cares met. We have those resources in our community, and that is pretty unique when you look at the size of the whole state. So we we plus there's long going history. All the programs basically know each other, have worked together, have resources together. You know, um, we know how to work together in a way. And I think that's really unique because we have the resources to do that. I think it's supported well too for that meeting. Yeah, I think we can all agree that there's something magical going on in this county as well, right? That's it's. it's there's something here that brought us all here and, and kept us here for a reason. And it's it's hard to define, um, but that that thing that makes this place special for for people like me and and I know for for you know people like you on the panel and, and a lot of people I know here it it um, you know it's intertwined with what we do 
you know, for the services that we provide, there's always been something special and magical about it. The stand down about the services here that just, I, I lived in other areas that are, you know, comparable, that have similar services, and it's not the same. It, and, it, and it probably won't be. Um, and I don't know if that can be defined. I, I've, I could probably, you know, I've spent a lot of time trying to define it over the years and, and you know, worked on a bunch of different projects. And I, I don't know if there is a way to truly encapsulate it, but I, I do know that this, this area is special. Um, and that, that does, you know, that does translate into the work that we do in, in the community. Is there anything about Humboldt County that makes it more difficult for, to receive services? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, the rural nature of it. We're we're uh we're part of the San Francisco VA healthcare system. Um, you know, like Matt, I I, I mean, I get I, I'm a vet, I, I get my health care through the VA. Um and I I, I believe I, I really really appreciate my health care. I have a, an amazing, you know, primary, I have amazing doctors over there, nurses, the staff there are always wonderful to me. I get really good health care, but you know, we're part of the San Francisco VA healthcare system. So the clinic only has so many resources. They do everything they can, but you know, a lot of like myself, I have to get uh, referrals out into the community, and you know, it can take a long time. A lot of people have to travel to San Francisco, um, you know, and just being so rural and having a lack of resources up here, um, you know, housing is getting more and more difficult everywhere. Um, you know, the employment is you know, it's, it's difficult to get. Um, adequate employment up here unless you you know have a lot going for you and you you've landed a really good job and, and a lot of that is luck too so um you know it's the same that most people deal with it's the same issues that most people deal with up here um, and it's it's part of you know we have the charm but we also have the the difficulties of being so rural somebody messaged me a listener and just said pact act and I, I don't know what that means um though the, what is the pact act apparently you guys are the ones who will know let's let's start with renee since daniel you are, are freezing up there the PACT Act is a new law that went into place that talks a lot about the toxins that our veterans would have been exposed to. Um, so the VA is there basically like the workers' comp for the military. They're there to compensate them for the injuries that they received in service that can be confirmed and continued and help them get the health care to treat those as well. So um, our office has been busy helping veterans file for claims related to the PACT Act, where they expanded the countries that Agent Orange was used and added six new countries, added lots of new conditions for um, our burn pit veterans that are specifically for those that served in the Middle East. And then it also touches on regards to Camp Lejeune and hiring attorney. It also touches on bases on regards to the Agent Orange and added two new conditions for that. Um, but it's allowing them easier access in theory to get the health care specifically for finding out more about the toxins and the impact it's done on their body. But my portion of it is helping them file for those disabilities related to the PACT Act. What, what are the burn pits? Uh, burn pits is basically um, any veterans that served in the Middle East. It lists very specific countries only from starting in 1990 where the veterans were exposed to toxins from the burn pits. The, the list goes over conditions such as asthma, COPD, brain cancer, you know, very scary conditions. But it gives them that easier access to file for those benefits and makes it a presumptive so they don't have to prove so hard what the condition is and why it's there. It's an automatic by the word presumptive. So to further that question, what, what were the burn pits, though? Why were there giant burn pits? Um, I don't think the PACT Act necessarily covers why, but there was a lot of waste, um, various chemicals, various items, a lot of just burning of everything, even down to tanks. Um, and it was those chemicals that released that that is directly about the uh, PACT Act. But for the why, I couldn't tell you why. 
Yeah. So during, uh, I mean, the the big part of it was in Iraq, but it also happened in Afghanistan and uh, anywhere that the military was deployed. Um, you know, they don't. You you can't build an entire infrastructure that they can you know, with you know, uh, sustain all those people. Uh, so you have a lot of sewage and and waste and everything. Basically, everything just went into a pit, and you poured fuel on it, and you burn it, and you had uh, you know people would get assigned to go stir it and make sure that it was getting burned and. It was uh, you know, a lot of stuff was burned and, and and breathed in with you know no sort of respirators or or you know and, and it would just spill into you know the base and everybody would breathe it in. So there's a lot of uh, you know, basically the pack act the pack act is, you know, Ray was talking about it. It's it's a big deal because it it treats anybody who has certain conditions that was in a certain area at a certain time. Um, as you know, they, they call it a predisposed or is a predetermined illness. So um, they assume that if you have that illness and you were in that area, that it's due to that reason. Uh, and so you, you're eligible for compensation and healthcare treatment for those illnesses. So I don't want to be this to be like, oh, if you join the military, you're going to go stir poop in the middle of a desert. Uh, I, I do have the question: if if you could join the military again, would you? For for the two that have been. No, all three of us, sir. Yeah, oh, yeah. All of you. Okay, great, great. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, I, I would. Uh, it's going to be tremendous opportunities. Go ahead, man. Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, I would like to think that I would, um, but my my forty year old brain is quite different than my twenty year old brain. Um, but I, I I do I know why I joined. Um, I stand by why I joined, and I I would I I still think along those lines. I would like to think that I would, um, but. Uh, wow, what a tremendous challenge it also was uh, as well. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my take on that. As for myself, I probably would rejoin. I uh, was in the United States Coast Guard, and because of prior education, I was able to pick my destination. So I got to serve in Hawaii. So how many young people get a say how oh, they got to serve in Hawaii and, you know, see that life um, and be part of search and rescues and saving people's lives and saving their boats from sinking or being on fire. I think um, uh, there's an incredible mission there. And I think it's still valid today. Um, but my bias is going to be towards the Coast Guard and, you know, jump into those freezing waters trying to save people. And it's, there's just so much good that can be done from our military. Not everybody comes out with injuries. Not everybody comes out hating the world. Um, they're now trained at time of discharge to know what to, what to expect better. Well, that didn't happen in the 80s when I served, and even older than that. That's more of a, something that's newer since the 2000s. So they know how to navigate better. So you can't just drop somebody at, into a new lifestyle and expect them to always adapt again, even if it's readapting to the old. But I think the military still has a wonderful uh, mission for a lot of people. It's just not everybody is going to have a great experience. Even if it was law enforcement or firefighting, not everybody's going to have the same experience. But it, there's some tremendous good that can happen, too. Yeah, you know, they, yeah, Matt and Renee make really good points. Um, I mean, you know, not not to get too personal about it, but you know, like I I grew up, um, you know, in you know immigrant family, uh, single parent household. Um, you know, I it was a pretty impoverished neighborhood, underprivileged schools. Um, I and I didn't do very well in school. I I wasn't performing uh, as well as I should have, uh, and I you know I didn't know where I was headed, but it wasn't anywhere good. And I was sat down one day and, and when I was 16 and they had me take the ASVAB and I scored really high. I mean, like I scored, I scored really high on it. And they, um, you know, I, all the recruiters 
started calling me and I, I started thinking about it. And I was like, this is a huge opportunity for me. And I started, um, you know, started heading towards that path and it, it really turned me around. I started getting straight A's in school. I started working out and getting in shape. And then I went into the Marine Corps. I, you know, I, I mean, I had an okay time. I don't, you know, I, I don't know how well I did really. I mean, I didn't feel like I was doing well at the time, but when I got out, I was like, yeah, I was actually okay at that. But then what it did is it gave me, uh, you know, it gave me the GI Bill practical things. And I ended up getting my bachelor's degree and my master's degree, and I have a career out of it. Um, and it gave me a community and I still have access to that community today. And they're the people that support me. Uh, when I'm having a really hard time and, and I give back to them and I support them uh, now that I know how, you know, I've been through it and I can kind of help people through that as well. So, no, absolutely not what I would I trade that because I wouldn't be anywhere near where I'm at. But would I do things a little differently? Probably I would make different choices, but I would still join. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two listeners message me both with uh, one with American flag saying yes yes I would join again and the other just said yes absolutely would join again so there's there's that take on that uh, we'll be right back you're listening to Thursday Night Talk to Thursday Night Talk. I'm Talby Creed, your local host. I'm here with Matthew Gilliland, College of the Redwood Veterans Program Coordinator, Renee Mabidi, County of Humboldt Veterans Service Officer, and Daniel Jacob, Advocate for American Legion 274, repping the North Coast Stand Down, which I feel like we veered away from the North Coast Stand Down uh, a little bit, though uh, I, I did, uh, one of the veterans who's messaging me constantly, one loves Renee, uh, and <laughs> They, they really liked the PowerPoints, not people uh, aspect, which I do want to ask that question in a moment, but well, I guess, okay, well, for those who are leaving the military, what do you think can be changed within uh, if, if because because I have seen uh, a little bit of of what people leaving the military are, are given as resources to like, here's how to cope. And it really is just PowerPoints <clears throat> or, or a basic overview of filling out paperwork, which I don't think is necessarily the most is it helpful? Yes, very. But is it all that is needed? Well, I guess that's my question. What What do you think could be given to those who are active duty, who are leaving the military in order to better prepare them? Well, part of it is is helping them uh, do with the transition of classes, having the individual county veteran service officers be on site to help them learn about claims, help them learn how to enroll in the VA health system, learning how to use their GI Bill, and learning about even free tuition for their dependents. The, it, the tap classes tend to be more focused on, let's get you a job, let's get you stable by that income. Where my world and my take is gonna be different because my take is going to be help them get the resources for the disability, get their claims validated, help them know that they're, that the United States government's acknowledging they got hurt and here's their monthly compensation. And what does that mean for benefits for them and their family? So my world is always going to be, let's help them know about their benefits. Let's help them get enrolled in the VA health system. But not all veterans are eligible for the VA health system. So it's hard to navigate if the answer could be different for each person. So that's why you need that individual assistance. And every county in California has a county veteran service office to help them navigate that. But not every state has that. That is luckily through the Board of Supervisors for all the counties that that's in place. But I think that that knowing resources that somebody's in your actual county to who to turn to, it is really huge. Did that answer your question or did I veer off? No, no, I mean, there's no wrong way to answer these questions. So yes, that was very uh, solid. Um, I, I think that a really important thing for individuals getting out of the military is uh, finding a new community, finding that what that new community looks like. Um, we're really drawn to uh, things that are bigger than ourselves. Um, 
That's what took us in the military. So um, I think I think the 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 I, I hate to say quicker, but I'm failing to find a, a better word for it. The the quicker an individual can can find that next mission um, uh, and their new community and where they can contribute um, is 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 going to be their best bet at thriving um, as a civilian or as a veteran. Sorry. I'd like to add that uh, there's at least two of us here that think Renee is the best now that you got that text. Um, I know she's been a tremendous help to so many people I know in this community. And then also, you know, Matt at, at, at CR and, um, and Cliff, his counterpart over at Cal Poly are, you know, that they're, they're on the front lines of helping people transition out of the military and with the work that they, the three of them do. Uh, and back when I was in school, it was Kim Hall who, uh, was working, uh, at HSU at the time, uh, and she's the founder of the stand down. They, they, they just held tremendously. Uh, and then, you know, from there, there's a, there's a lot of different, um, programs that are there to support. Um, I'm going to plug my podcast that I did when I was at HSU. If you go on there, uh, on Cal Poly's veterans website, there's, uh, I did a whole podcast, uh, with, uh, my graduate, uh, my grad school uh, partner, uh, Devin, who's now a, a counselor at the Vet Center, um, you know, we did a podcast together that talks about uh, transitioning and, and you know, the, the difficulties with it and a program that we that actually helped start, uh, helped Kim start back when I was in school, the Veteran Outdoor Program. Um, and I talk a lot about the data behind why it's so difficult to transition. And then I did uh, a, a number of interviews with with people who've been through that program and transitioned here in Humboldt County and, and um, you know, went straight from the military into to Humboldt State at the time, now Cal Poly. And uh, we did this outdoor program together that still, they're still doing it today and then transitioned into um, into the community here and graduated it and made it successful. We actually were able to improve the graduation rates and the success rates in school with that program. Fantastic. Sorry for the selfish plug, but yeah, there's that's, a lot that's of amazing. Um, we've got about four minutes before the round robins begin, so I want to ask the question. Uh, I, I I think a lot of listeners are are now engaged and they're like, okay, this sounds really great. How do I get there? Where is the North Coast stand down? When is it happening? Uh, does it cost money for can civilians go? Um, what what are the details of the North Coast stand down? Well, the event is October fifth, sixth, and seventh. Um, it is open to veterans and their families, but it's not a community-based event. So civilians, basically in our world, civilians aren't, aren't part of it unless they're there for as a volunteer. And most volunteers have actually gone onto the website and, and made those arrangements themselves. Um, it does not cost anything. You are asked to bring some form of military ID. So either your VA health card, or you can now add veteran to your driver's license. Um, so that's a form of ID. They can bring their discharge and then just accessing all those benefits, accessing dental care in this community for free. I mean, that's just, it's huge, right? So there's just so many resources that it is, it would be amazing if every veteran in the community came to this event, the resources that would be available next year or in the following year would just be amazing, but it's a great event. There's schedules out there for riding the bus in, um, it's an all day event, you know, basically breakfast, lunch, and dinner to help get them through the process. It's not a, you know, quick stop. It's, it's an event. It's a fair built just for veterans. And it's wonderful to connect with everybody each year to see everybody um, and see them maybe make changes and watch them change from one year to the next to see their own progress as they, they reassimilate into the world. that answer your question for the days it does it does uh nine what, to four thirty then there is for the homeless they can stay overnight they're welcome they're welcome to bring their pets so they can potentially get pet services um 
and get all the different resources available to them. Maybe enroll in the VA clinic, maybe see the counselor on site. Um, you know, it's a great event. I encourage everybody to come. And there's a, a chiropractor. Uh, what, what else do they have? So the massages this year, Renee, I'm not up to date on it. I, I'm not up to date you know either, um, but you know, it, it's a three day event. We encourage everybody to come check it out. If they're needing the dental, we really encourage them to come on Thursday, come be one of the first people, get that care. You know, the do we've seen dogs come in with mange that can get left with better care and dog food to supply to them to help change them. Bag lunches as they're leaving on the last day, showers, haircuts, um, you know, um, we encourage the veterans. Bed Lodge uh, is a big one. Yeah, the Lodge. And we really encourage, you know, um, the media to come out, be part of it, and, um, you know, get the word out. Help us get that word out. So we appreciate this opportunity, too. Um, so, so quick question, uh, somebody messaged and said, like, how do I volunteer for this? Um, so how, how does somebody volunteer for this? I would definitely encourage them to go to the website. Uh, there's a phone number definitely on the flyer in regards to coordinating for travel and helping get on transportation, but probably literally call ahead so that we know where they're needing that um, and what kind, where their, where their goal is. You know, everybody's energized on Thursday, but by Saturday, everybody's energy is low. You got to spread out those volunteers evenly. You know, that's the biggest is, is through the website. The, the flyer itself says 707-633-8411. And the Stand Down's website is www.northcoaststanddown.org. No spaces. But make that connection. And sometimes it might be make that donation as well. Definitely. So we are now in round robin territory. Everybody gets three minutes. Uh, you can use this time to pretty much talk about whatever you want, whatever you want listeners or viewers to take away with them, um, either from this conversation or you can ramble about your pets. It, it, it's cool with me. It's your time to talk. Um, let's start with Matthew. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, three minutes. Huh? I don't know if I can talk that long. Um, I, I did want to touch on one thing we were talking about the stand down itself. I'm, this is the first year that I know of that there's also a job fair in conjunction. Uh, it's on Thursday. Um, Daniel, are you guys having part of that up at the Arcada Vets Hall or is it just the Eureka Vets Hall? It, it's not the Arcada Vets Hall. It's a Eureka Vets Hall. Okay. And so I think there are move I, I don't know the details, but I think they're going to be, they're talking about moving it to the event, but don't quote me on that. Oh, moving it to, okay. Um, but yeah, so there's going to be a lot of local employers there. I just wanted to say that since we're kind of talking to uh, the folks out listening. Um, round Robin, what do I think folks should take away from this? Um, I think the biggest thing that I would like to kind of hammer on is that for, for you folks out there listening, um, the vet service community in this area is well connected. Um, so if you do make contact with one of us, you have access to all of us. Um, so uh, please just uh, just start and uh, we'll help you along the way. Uh, it's None of us have the mindset of you navigating this by yourselves. Um, that's what we're here for, whether it's education, benefits, um, being part of an organization uh, like Daniel and, and their group up there. Um, yeah, we're, we're here to help. Uh, we're here to shoot the breeze um, and we're just, Well, we need you guys just like you need us. It's, I don't know what I got, so thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Let's go to Daniel next. Yeah, I, um, you know, if you were thinking about coming to the event, come on out. It's a, it's a really great time. Uh, you know, I've been able to go as a participant the last couple of years. Um, you know, not and not as a, a coordinator. So you know, the stress levels were much 
flow and I had a really good time. And it's you know it's been that way from from the beginning when I first started volunteering. Um, there's food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. The uh, please, if you can make it to the sweat lodge, I wish I knew exactly what time and day it was. Maybe Renee can can have has a oh. schedule. Uh, it's Oh yeah, we'll, we'll look it up. We'll, we'll find it. Um, the Sweat Lodge is a, an amazing event, and they invite all veterans to participate. So come on out for that. It's it's late in the evening. Uh, we'll we'll have more information on the website. Um, yeah, there. I mean, I think there's going to be live bands. I, I think we're still like confirming that. It's bring your pet and your families. It's a it's a good time. I've always really you know felt like there was something special about the stand down, even compared to other stand downs in other areas. Um, ours is a lot more fun. It's a it's a really it's a good community event, um, and that's yeah that's that's what helps people transition right there is community. So come on out, uh, Renee. Um, I really encourage people to come to the stand down, even if they've been to it in the past. Um, I've been with every stand down since they started. Kim's the one that brought this to our county and has been the lifeblood to keep it going. So thank you, Kim. Um, but there's so much more. Every every time something new comes up, as you brought up, the PACT Act is basically new since the last time we've had a stand down. And having people not understand hypertension for our Agent Orange vets is huge, especially with six new countries, helping to find them to know you need to get this done. We need to protect you and your family is huge. So even if they've done it in the past, there's so much more for them to learn. Um, you can now add driver, uh, veteran to your driver's license. So they got to do is bring their member for discharge up to the stand out and we'll knock out that form so they can get that done at the DMV at no cost. But there's so much out there to take part in. Leaving it behind is is just sad in a way because this is so passionate for the three of us is trying to help veterans, trying to connect them, helping them know what's available. Um, and with the ever-changing world of the VA, you you have to stay current. You have to know what's out there and maybe something's new out there for them. You know, helping them, you know, when we started, these kids were, you know, newborns and now they're ready for college since we first started this and helping those kids go on to college and learn what's available. It's just huge. So we encourage definitely everybody come out. You don't have to come to all three days, but come see. Be part of something bigger than just yourself. And um, it's pretty magical. It, it makes a difference. We've seen people come in that barely could be around other people two years later now, maybe volunteering and having jobs. Um, one of the best things about this, too, is for the homeless, they help them get clothing and tents or, or shoes and things to that effect. So we really are prepping them for the bad weather that's coming at them. Um, and hopefully it won't be raining on us, but it's a great opportunity to um, stay current in this ever-changing world and be part of something bigger than themselves, but get the needed services that they, they may not get it on an everyday basis. You definitely can't go walk up and get free dental care on every day. This is an amazing opportunity. And the veterinarian services is huge. And this is done through volunteers and donations. So we really encourage everybody to be part of that. I looked on the Stand Downs website and I really couldn't find the dates for the Sweat Lodge, but um, it does help link you to all the Native American tribes that are volunteering and donating. You know, there's just so much out there that to bring this to our community. We encourage everybody to be part of that. Learn, help us to succeed. So I, I wanted to ask the question because it, it seemed, I think it was, uh, it was Daniel who had said that, uh, you know, or maybe it was not part of the transition of, of coming out is trying to get people connected and, and kind of giving them the party atmosphere. What's the entertainment happening? If, if there is any, because it seems like there's going to be music or something. So the energy of the event? The, like the you cut out what? Oh, oh, the <laughs> Yeah. Like what fun activities can, can people experience there? If nothing else, I can kind of answer that. That's volunteers. That's the volunteers coming out and pulling out their guitar and playing music. And they've had movies in the past. And 
um, you know, the start of the stand down where they're doing this, uh, the salute to the flag and honoring everybody who's died since the last stand down. There's, there's, there's so many people and so much positive energy for change and helping people. The volunteer portion, I wouldn't be able to say who's going to commit this year, but it's definitely something to check out. And um, the morning crowd is going to be different than the evening crowd. Um, so there's no set answer for that specific question, unfortunately. That's okay. I, I want to thank everyone for being on the show today. The North Coast Stand Down will happen October 5th, 6th, and 7th. And it sounds like there's a job fair at the Eureka Veterans Hall happening that same weekend. So uh, so for those seeking to go, I guess just go. Um, though check out, is it northcoaststanddown.com? Uh, www.northcoaststanddown.org org okay north coast stand down dot org for more information thank you to matt mcgillan college of the redwood veterans program coordinator renee mavity county of humboldt veterans service officer as well as daniel jacob the advocate for the american legion 274 as well as our rep dishing out the info on the north coast stand down that's all the time we have for today thank you thank you thank you to our panel um really great information given out tonight if you have topics or suggestions for the for Thursday Night Talk, email us at kzzh at accesshumboldt.net. And a reminder, this show replays Friday evenings at 8 p.m. right here on KZZH 96.7 FM. You can also watch this show on Access Humboldt's YouTube channel. Just look up Access Humboldt or Access Humboldt Thursday Night Talk on YouTube and you'll find us. Uh, thank you for joining us. We'll see you on Broadband Channel 11 and 12 throughout the weekend. Uh, I hope everyone enjoys uh, enjoys their the rest of this weekend and then next weekend when North Coast Stand Down happens. Uh, cheers, everyone. Mm -hmm.